No! Thank you, Chaos. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yay! It's a Monday. <laughs> um, uh, we have a little note for you here. Uh, we will be uh, using some kind of ruler, uh, so please uh, go ahead and uh, grab one. If you don't have one, uh, like a physical ruler, do we have a physical ruler? I, I don't have a physical ruler. What is this? The oh, 19, wait, 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 look. The 1980s? Look, check it out. Oh, we do. We do. Okay, so ruler. It's been here since the 1980s. I think so. Um, ah, look, if I not, see rulers in some of the Yay, yeah. people are showing up their rulers. There we go. Okay, and then uh, if you would like one uh, on your screen, there is a link. It's actually pretty cool the way all of that works. Um, and uh, yeah, you can use that one, but we're going to do that uh, a little bit later. I'm a little bit torn about using rulers because the last time I used a ruler in class, I had 10, no, it was a thousand lines. A thousand lines? Yeah, from a small rural town and it was Alex Sandy will not, and I won't share what the verb what was. What did but... you do? <laughs> <laughs> will not play bag tag during Brissy no, recess. No, Smith accidentally struck the teacher with his ruler. Oh, and nice. Still, yeah. They still let him pass. <laughs> okay. Well. Rulers required for yeah. today. <laughs> Don't strike anyone. First rule. <laughs> Don't hit each other. Okay. Um, yes. So today, today's fun. Today I, it was one of my favorite days. Uh, super active. We're going to be talking about variation. Um, and um, it's a little bit different uh, in biology, the difference between the term variation and diversity. Um, we've been saying the word diversity quite a lot lately and quite rightly so. Um, and it means something different in biology. Um, when we're talking about diversity, like diversity across or among humans, what we're maybe talking about biologically, like if we were to talk about diversity within another populate, like another species, let's say deer, uh, we would use the words variation. So totally cool to use it when we're talking about humans. When we're talking about non-human uh, organisms, we tend to say variation instead. Does that make sense? Interest specifically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interest specifically. That's right. Within. Right. When we talk about diversity uh, within biology and within sort of non-human organisms, what we're talking about um, is across different species, right? Um, the number of species that we have, biodiversity is usually the term that we use, okay? So, you know, no, no major sort of um, violation of, of terminology, but just used a little bit differently, the popular, the more common way of using the word diversity versus the biological way of using it. Can I do a shout out, a diversity shout out? Yeah. And a memorial. So if you oh. don't know who this uh, name is, Georgina Mace was a world famous superstar of ecology and diversity. She is the one who started the quantification of IUCN red list listings for different species, endangered species around the world. Uh, wonderful woman, super, super lovely and brilliant woman. And she died last night in the UK. Yeah. And she had a great long life, so that memory is a blessing, but we don't have Georgina Mace anymore. So yeah. what you can do to celebrate that is Google her later on. Yes, Georgina Mace. Um, and if you haven't already Googled Ruth Bader Ginsburg, please mm. learn about her life um, and the incredible uh, change that she has made in the world. Yeah, which makes me want to say 2020, you suck. Oh, but. Yeah. You definitely suck some ways. But Shit's Creek, that's awesome. Yay, oh, Shit's Creek. Yeah, and take a look at what it's done in the captions. Oh, Just, it's totally... It's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a weekend it's been. Um, you know, the loss of, of two very, very important uh, women in the world, um, and then the celebration of, of Canadian media. So, yay. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Okay. Um, you had some homework and actually what we're going to do is we're going to extend the homework a little bit, um, because Monday. we want to, uh, really kind of dive into this, uh, a little bit more. So for Wednesday, um, and what we're going to do is kind of add on to that homework. So <laughs> hopefully you've done some, um, and now we're going to ask you some specific questions. We've, uh, hopefully you've dived into the Velager larval life cycle. We told you, I'm, Wee, a I'm, I'm a free Velager. flowing. <laughs> Um, we've I'm told you about the Glachidia, the Unionid life cycle. Um, and so now we want you to um, go away after class and really take a look at 
what the pros and cons are. We talked a little bit about the fact that there are um, always these pros and cons associated with strategies and adaptations. So what are they? We want you to kind of brainstorm, to look into the literature um, and see if you can figure out what some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of those are. And then we'll do an activity on Wednesday to make sure that everybody gets on the same page. Cool? Come see, come sa. That's what we say in our family. Okay. Um, today, learning outcomes. We are going to talk all about data and visualizing data. Um, it's going to build help this you build. This is not a Star Trek thing. Oh right, yeah, because data is awesome. Um, that's what we should name <laughs> yes. our dog. No. Okay, we're getting a dog. Because You'll... we'd have to call him Datum. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no uh, joke. <laughs> so, oh, that's so nerdy. <laughs> if there's, if there's puppies, it's data. If it's puppy, it's datum. Okay. So we're going to talk all about data and visualizing <laughs> data. <laughs> Smith out. Yeah, no, um, I'm done. <laughs> and it's going to help you with your seminars uh, because one of the, the big sort of capstone activities um, is a visualization, is an infographic. And we want you to think about really, you know, the importance of communicating through nonverbal ways, non-word ways, non-written ways. We want you to think about drawing and how that can have a real impact. Uh, because essentially a graph or a figure is a drawing. Um, yep. And we want you to think about, you know, what's important information and what kind of can cloud the, the message. Yeah. Stephen King, when he talks about writing, talked about it as mind control. And I think about making figures in the same way that I'm making, we're making a figure to control how you think, to lead you in a direction. And that's super powerful, but it has, it's with great power. Uh, oh, I think uncle, great. somebody, sons came great sandwiches great. or great responsibility. That's it. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about how to display data badly. This was, of course, a paper. <laughs> Somebody wrote a paper about it, um, and um, probably a white guy from the yeah. 19 whatevers. The 80s. The had, 80s. Yeah. There you we had go. Short on top, long at the back. Probably. Yeah. So this was probably like the funny paper that he wrote in his career. <laughs> um, and uh, it's actually super useful, um, but we're going to build on it and we're going to modernize it a little bit because one of the things, unfortunately, that we have to also teach now is not only how to make a good graph, it's also how not to lie. And how to spot it when others are. Yeah. So it's not just about displaying data badly. It's about displaying fraudulent data. Um, and so, you know, one of the key ways that you can tell if data are fraudulent is whether it's been done with a Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> watch out for the Sharpie. Okay. If you're interested in this kind of thing, after we talk about it, there's a book called, uh, called Calling Bullshit that just oh, came yeah. out by Carl Bergstrom. Really good We one. can tweet it later on. Yeah. Um, okay, so we would like you to annotate this slide, please. So go up to uh, view options, go to annotate and stamp what you think on the colored box on the side, what you think the problem is with this graph. No trick. There is a problem. <laughs> oh, I, this Love is it. freaking awesome. Love it. There we go. Stamp oh. the problem. Super. <laughs> The type of graph, some of you are going incorrect inference. Oh, That's all of you. excellent, excellent. Okay. Okay, let's Wonderful. pause this. Because this is amazing. I'm going to say... You're all awesome. Yep. Okay. So... So, stop. Yep, so stop. <laughs> one, of the, one of the cool things here, so many of you have honed in on the fact that there are, that y-axis is, uh, is wonky. Some of you saw that the x-axis is also wonky. It's Very not increasing good. in the same kind of, the same kind of increments. Very good. Some of you suggested this was fraudulent presentation. Some of you suggested it was an incorrect inference. I think all of those are true, but certainly it's w one of the keys of reading visually presented data is to look at the axes. Are they labeled? In this case, that's another way. They're not really. They're, you might infer what those numbers are, but it's not said. Yeah. And they don't increase at the same rate. And that's just, that's not cool. So fraudulent presentation, yes. Because of the y-axis, largely, but also because of the uh, x-axis. Now, right? take take a look at the next... Um... Here is a more accurate presentation yeah. of the data. This is what it looks like if you put everything, you know, on some kind of like, you know, incremental, same increment increase along the axes. Yeah. Okay. 
So big difference yeah. um, in the way that the data are presented, right? And the yeah. effect that that could have. This one. It's a little bit more. Yeah. Um, we want you, if we're going to try this, um, we're going to try to make some breakout rooms. Um, we want you to quickly screenshot this, take it with you where you go, okay? <laughs> um, if you need to come back and take a look at it, that's fine. But what we're going to do uh, is we're going to try some breakout rooms uh, and send you away to talk a little bit about what is wrong with this graph. So take a screenshot. We'll send you an invitation uh, in just a second. Open all rooms. We'll give you two minutes, three minutes to talk about it, and then we'll get you to fill out the annotation on the side, okay, with the stamp. So go ahead, and if you can, accept the invitation. I see that you are going away. I'm coming back. You're coming back, okay. See if you can figure out some of the things that are wrong with this graph. Also take a photo with the phone, right? And of, yeah. I'd like to take it with you. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the great use of the breakout rooms. I like it. I, I hope they like it. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm. Is anybody in the chat? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. So not everybody's in a breakout room, but lots of people are, so that's good. Excuse me. The, so it populates new ones at the top? Mm -hmm. Okay. I got really confused, turned around last time, um, like scrolling down, going, why does it keep on putting it at the top? <laughs> <coughs> Takes a little while for everybody to get in, eh? Probably with all sorts of uh, different speeds and. All rooms. Give them one minute. Bring them back. Doesn't know how to translate that. <laughs> so this is a translation uh, closed captioning that's biased against any of Donald Duck's family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, look! 
It got the M part. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wonderful. Welcome back. Mm, you are all back with us now. Wahahaha. Okay, so go ahead and annotate what you think uh, is wrong with this graph. There we go. Labeling type of graph. Fraudulent presentation? Question mark. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hear ya. Okay, but I do see lots and lots on the blue, on the yellow, and on the purple. Remind me again what the blue, yellow, and purple ones are because I can't read them, can't anymore. See them anymore. Them there up. we go. Blue is labeling. Purple, type of graph, yes. Type um, of graph is the big deal. And, uh, and then the x-axis, sure. Okay, so the big, the big deal right now, so if you wouldn't mind stopping annotating. Uh, the, big, the big problem with this um, is, first of all... And there are several. I, well, there are several. That I, like, I question the validity of the actual research that was done. Like, why are we, why are we breaking up these categories the way that we've broken them up? Um, but but for the purposes of the data visualization, it's the wrong type of graph, right? Because by using these connected scatter plot type type um, graphs, what we're doing is essentially we're suggesting that as you transition um, <laughs> from white to Latino, you change your performance on on a on a on a test, right? Or as you transition from Asian to Filipino, uh, you ch you change your ability. So it means that you're transitioning from these different pheno phenotypes, which is just not true at all, right? Uh, as you go from female to white, um, all of those things. So it's really not the appropriate type of graph. Uh, the appropriate type would be a bar graph. Or doing better science. Or just doing better science. Yeah. There we go. Okay? So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, Next one's a bit easier, but it's really common, super common when you see points on a graph. Yes, take a look at this one. Let us know uh, what you think. Uh, please go ahead and annotate uh, what you think the problem is with this one. <laughs> Super. Great. Okay. So in this particular case, um, we we would talk about an incorrect inference as being the the sort of the driving problem, the ultimate problem with this graph. Um, yes, people consume chocolate. Yes, people win uh, Nobel prizes, um, but those things aren't directly correlated, or they're not causal, right? It's not. And what this graph is suggesting is the more chocolate you eat, the more Nobel prizes you will win. Um, that it were so that it was simple. so simple. <laughs> Now, of course, there is potentially a connection here, right? Uh, in that, you know, chocolate consuming uh, countries tend to be more privileged. They tend to have more resources available for science. Um, and therefore, they tend to uh, probably have more Nobel representation. Um, but you don't put that on an X, Y axis, right? You would put sort of, you know, GDP or you would put, um, you know, uh, national investment in science, that kind of deal, right? Um, to be able to, um, you know, to, to present. So it is, it is an incorrect inference. Be an interesting one to look at for the uh, cocoa producing nations, because then it would be a correct demonstration of colonial, yes. the colonial nature of science. For sure. All right. So this next one, we've talked about uh, several. We talked about line graphs incorrectly instead of bar graphs or histograms. We've talked about mistaking correlation for causation. Another way of visualizing things that's super common is, are maps. And of course, uh, what we'll start out doing is give you a bit of context. This is a video clip from Fox News a couple of years ago, several years ago. Oh, mm -hmm. it's not working. Try again. There we go. Yeah. 
seven years ago in a real inconvenient truth. Former Vice President Al Gore once famously claimed the North Pole ice cap would be ice-free by now due to climate change. But scientists say the ice cap has actually expanded and is now mm -hmm. twice the size of Alaska. So, short video clip from that news coverage about uh, that used maps to say Next slide. Without error, that look, uh, Al Gore said we'd be ice free, and Al Gore is a liar. Because look at all this ice. Look at it all. So what we're going to ask you to do is remember this figure, and we're going to do even better. We're, we're going to take it, it to the, the next slide. Put it on the top. There you go. And say if you're interested later, there is a link on this page when you get the PDF to the actual data. Here's four. Uh, maps that were taken in the years 2012 and 2014. Can you spot and use the stamp tool to annotate which, which two? Which of the two were used in that Fox News report? And then tell us what the problem is. Aha! Very good. Nice. Nice. Well done. Okay. Nice. I love it. Nice. 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 Super. Okay. So, so what's the problem? You've got it. I think. I think it there is. we go. Somebody, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, you know what? Let's do this. Uh, we can clear. And now, using your annotation, what's the problem? There we go. People are already starting to look. Super. Thank you. Okay, super. So you know what the problem is. You're comparing summer ice and winter ice. Yeah. And yeah, there you go. So fraudulent presentation of data. Yep. Um, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna stop with the annotation for yep. a little while, and We've worn out our annotators. Yeah, and move on. <laughs> That's my reaction. Very good. Recorded right. live earlier today. Yeah, happens all the time. Sometimes by accident, um, but most of the time, especially depending on the source, uh, quite quite intentionally. Okay, so. We're gonna stop annotating for a little while now because um, we are going, uh, there we go. We're going to um, do a little activity together, okay? We're gonna collect some data together. Um, we're gonna do it on human variations. So we're gonna talk a little bit about human uh, variation. Uh, and one of the sort of most obvious examples is height of humans. Um, and there are some uh, beautiful differences associated with our height. My best friend is four foot nine. Um, and the tallest person I've ever met is six foot five. Um, but even more of a difference um, has been uh, quite a nice little story about these two, these two people. Yeah, you, you can just see here and we can play the, the video of um of Muggsy Bogues, who finished his career as a Toronto Raptor. But the, uh, lots of there. Yeah. Nice. So Muggsy, uh, seen here, uh, was was pretty pretty small for a professional uh, basketball player, um, but so fast and so good at stealing the ball. Uh, whereas Manute uh, Bull um, was not super graceful uh, on on the court, didn't didn't run down the court very fast, um, but was really good at getting it into the basket. Right, super just kind of stood there and at blocked. seven foot seven and just kind of you know tipped it in. Uh, and they actually played together uh, for one season. Um, and uh, yeah, the tallest player and the shortest player. So variation exists within, within the human population. If we stack it out and visualize it this way, um, where females are uh, wearing white and males are wearing black, you can see actually this curve. And this curve uh, is kind of characteristic of a lot of variation in populations, whether it's plants or bacteria or vertebrates or invertebrates, right? We see this bell curve, okay? And we're familiar with the term bell curve. We call it what the, the sort of the more sort of um, the, the jargony term that we use is called a normal distribution. And that doesn't just mean like, common. Um, it's, a, it's a specific term to describe this, this bell that exists, right? Where along the average, there are more people represented or more instances of that type of variation um, along the average. And that on both sides, 
the representation decreases, okay? Um, yeah, so it's super common. It doesn't always exist. There are some phenotypes for which there is zero variation. So can you think of a trait that has no variation in it? I think the number of hearts. <laughs> the number of hearts that humans have really doesn't vary. <laughs> Just one. Um, in fact, if you vary, you're probably not going to survive right? Um, so if you have no heart, if you have two hearts, your life isn't going to be very long, right? So there's no variation in that and for, you know, an adaptive reason, right? But in many cases, there is variation around a trait. Is this a good graph? Uh, if you have marching cadets wearing matching yeah. uniforms, you might think so, but I, I think there's some ways that it's uh, hiding some stuff. It's hiding some stuff. Like, why did they divide up people by sex? First of all, why are there only two sexes or two genders represented there? I'm not sure if they're representing sex or gender, but, but why are there only two, first of all? The other thing is, if you're going to highlight the difference, doing it all together clumped like this doesn't make any sense. This is a better representation of binary distribution of um, height uh, within a, a population, right? Because compared between two categories. Compared between two categories, two exactly. Yeah. If you're doing it this way, you can't really tell what's going on with the white category, right? So a better representation would look more like this. But we want to generate our own data, and we're going to try this. Um, <laughs> this needs some instructions, so don't go anywhere yet. Relax. What we want you to do is measure using your ruler. Um, oh, it says on the back of your field guide, we don't have you buying field guides. So use your ruler or your screen ruler to measure the length of your index finger and your fourth finger, your ring finger on your left hand. You do that, write them down, those two measurements and just hold on. Um, and we'll get things set up to start sharing data. We're gonna use Menti, so if you wanna open up a Menti, go ahead, um, and uh, we'll call out who's gonna click in at what time. We need to make four graphs. So just take a minute, measure those two finger lengths, and we'll get set up. Okay. Everybody raise your hands if there is. Oh, why is that? How can they? What's wrong? How you already launched it? See it? No, I didn't. Reset results. We'll just reset results. Yep. Cool. Okay. So we're going to start first uh, with females and we're going to get you to click in or to, to type in uh, on Menti your index length. Starting. Starting. Now. Now. Go ahead. Females. Index length only. Okay, just another few seconds. Yeah, good job. Three, two, two one. one. Okay, stop. Hold on one second. Pause Next up cells, pause cells. are going to be females. Hold on, though. We'll just tell you when. Females with the ring finger length. That's what we're going to do. Don't do it yet. Didn't do it. Oh. I think you can go back. No. No? Let's do, do it real quick again. Okay, sorry guys. Um, we're gonna reset. We're gonna do the index length again. Um, it didn't capture the practice the makes purpose. Yeah, in, index. We're starting again. Index finger length, females. 
excellent. Great, thank you. All right. Relaunch for the next one. Get ready for the ring finger length. Not yet. Okay. And go. Females ring finger. Excellent. That's great. Excellent. Okay. Super. Alrighty. We're going to caption it. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Males get ready for the index finger. Not yet. Good to and go. And go. Delightful. Thank you very much. Can we reset? Yeah. Hold on just one second. Get ready for the ring finger length. And begin. And begin. Wonderful. This is so cool. I'm going to... Oh, that's an awesome... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, best data set ever. <laughs> Science! Science! I'm going to stop sharing for a second um, because we now have to update our slides. There we go. Two seconds. Yeah, it's all good. Amazing. Amazing. It looks so good. Wait till Giant you see this. Okay. on the fly. Ready? Ready, ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Data, science, done in like five minutes. Now, you write the paper, you do the methods, you do the results <laughs> over here. You're responsible for the references. You're going to make the done. figures. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen with you in just one second. Here we go. Ready? That's what it looks like. Well done, everybody. Um, I'm going to get rid of my face on the recording for a second, too. And let's take a look. So we have uh, females on the left-hand side. We have males on the right-hand side. And take a look at uh, the graphs that we made. Um, super cool. Um, lots of things to talk about, right? Lots of data. And to me, there are so many conclusions that we can make here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get you thinking and you talking to each other a little bit. We'll try breakout rooms again. Let us know if it's getting super annoying. Um, we want you to talk to each other. Uh, so we have a bunch of questions that uh, we want you to answer. And to do it, we're going to use a Google spreadsheet. So we're going to pop um, the link to the Google spreadsheet into the chat on course link and you can go there um, to work together to answer some of the questions that that were there okay um, we also and, and maybe we'll add some questions too because oh no it's all there so what patterns do you observe and again like there's probably like four or five different things that you can say from this um, and then we want you to reflect a little bit on the methodology, what was wrong with it, what could we have done better, that kind of deal. So I'm going to set up some breakout rooms for you to go, um, and we'll prompt you with questions. If you have any questions, you can send us a question, um, and we can come and visit you, um, that kind of deal. So basically, you can ask us to walk around the room and circulate if you, if you need us, okay? <laughs> I know, it's so weird, but anyway, let's try. We have time for I see this. lots of you appearing. 
Um, to, if you're having problems editing, tell me in the chat. I don't think you should, but uh, you I'm know, stuff happens. Open all rooms. You should get an invitation. Hopefully, we'll uh, be able to get you there for for quite a few minutes to to talk to each other. working hard. Baird and hardly working. Yeah. It's a good thing you're working hard, not hardly working. That's a Monday saying, eh? Yeah. At least my dear where I was raised. <laughs> Can I post the slide? Let me try. good. I don't think anybody needs us. Yay. Teach themselves. <laughs> Look at that. I think we're learning some things about the uh, um, the spreadsheet. What's that? I think there's a maximum number. That a maximum can, number uh, that can be on? Yeah. Okay. But we'll feel that's good. I hope that at least one person per um, per group is on. Excellent. For those of you who uh, have not joined a room and just hanging out with us, hold on. Hello. Uh, for you, those of you just joining us, we're doing a breakout room session right now, um, so it may be super awkward to like send you into one, so just hang out with us for a bit and then we'll take up the discussion and you'll be able to dive back in if that's okay. If you do desperately want to be assigned, just send us a little note in the course link chat and let us know and I can send you into a room. We'll probably be another two or three minutes more though before we close it all down.
Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. We're reading, uh, we're taking a look at, at, at what you're filling up the spreadsheet with, and it's, there's some really good stuff. Yeah. And some really cool things to talk about more. Wonderful. Yeah. This, wow. yeah. Love Science. it. Science. Science. Okay. Really good. Okay. I'm going to send Give a one a minute. minute yeah. yeah. One minute warning. So everyone will get whisked back to us in 50 seconds. Whisked. I'm going to bring this over here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so disturbing. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, wonderful. Okay, welcome back, everyone. I think everyone's back. Yes, everyone's back. Yay. That, I for us, that was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please feel free to give us some feedback on uh, that, type of, uh, that type of activity. We're just looking at the Google Doc right now, and it is really comprehensive. So well done. Um, well done, you. Well done, you. Let's just take a look. Okay, actually, you know what? If um, if all of you can see the Google Doc, it's, it's working. Um, yeah, uh, but I also want to kind of flip back and forth between the data and and some of the conclusions. Um, normal distributions uh, among uh, the female distribution, absolutely right. So it follows that that normal distribution that we talked about before. Um, we can see it uh, right here. Uh, it's kind of super pleasing for me anyway, kind of, you know, kind of almost equal. It all works really well, right? We must have done good science. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a question that I have for you. Um, do we see a normal distribution among uh, the male data sets? So take a look at the male data sets. And is it a normal distribution? Um, and really kind of take a look at it for a second. It's not a trick question, it's a difficult question. Um, see whether or not you think there is a normal distribution in the male data set. Some good thoughts in the chat. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Uh, yes, very good. So, excellent, thank you. Um, if there had been an additional category, this I'm reading from the chat directly, an additional category of 90 to 99 millimeters for the male data set, then it might very well have been a normal distribution. That student, thank you very much. Totally correct, right? Top end got compressed is another... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The top end here got compressed with this greater than or less than. So that, yeah. So. And we need to be really careful when we use greater than or less than because it very well could be a normal distribution just shifted towards the higher end of the scale. Yeah. Um, we get into trouble in, in data visualization with this a lot. Okay, so you have to make sure that the scale that you use allows for the full characterization of the data, including the distribution, if you're interested in distributions in this normal distribution, for example. Yeah, okay. tie that back to the basketball example. If we plotted height yeah. of men or women for the NBA or the or for total population for men or women, yeah. and then threw in the WNBA and threw in the NBA, those would change the distribution. Um, that we'd see yeah. more, they, we'd see the exact kind of clumping that you'd seen here with the finger data. Exactly. So who did we exclude in the methodology? You've got a super comprehensive list here as well. And, and again, it's really important to recognize who is not in the room when we're doing science, right? 
um, especially when we're doing it on humans, but also like we talked about before, uh, female spiders. Yeah. Nobody really knows much about them, right? Yeah. Even though the most famous spider literature in the world is Charlotte's Web. <laughs> so, so we have to ask who's excluded. It doesn't necessarily mean that the science is bad. It just means that the conclusions that we make have to recognize that there are um, organisms or traits uh, or ecosystems that are excluded from the conversation. Um, and we excluded, we did this on purpose to kind of bring out the conversation. <laughs> and so with deepest apologies to all of those people um, who participated who do not identify as male or as female. Um, it's important to recognize that the vast majority of literature on health, for example, is focused on male, um, a lot of female exclusion, a lot of uh, non-binary exclusion, um, and those, those stories are important also to capture. Uh, we, of course, uh, excluded the disabled. We excluded uh, the deceased, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so we excluded a lot of people uh, by using those binary distinctions. Yeah. Um, what can we conclude from these data? Lots, right? We can conclude that females tend to have smaller or shorter finger length than males. Uh, we can conclude um, that also the relationship between the two fingers is a little bit different. And this kind of brings us to the next uh, part of the story. But what limitations do we have from these data? All of those things that you've included are right. We'll post these so you can take a look and then kind of see whether or not you can find evidence of those in the actual data sets. Um, and then our methodology, even after we excluded like a whole bunch of people from the methods, uh, was still flawed, right? Every one of you was doing measurements, but where did you start from? You know, how could we have tightened that up a little bit? And that's really what is important in science is to tighten up those methodologies as much as possible. So uh, one person could have done all of the measurements of the four or 500 of you, right? That would have been more standardized than had we all just done what we did, right? Um, and so, we could yeah. have coached you in Zoom. We could have we could have said, "Show me where." You're, oh yeah, a little yeah, bit lower, a little exactly, bit higher. Exactly, exactly. So there was all sorts of faulty methodology involved, um, even after we did all of the exclusionary methodology. But it's important to realize this isn't just a thing that happens in a running live classroom demonstration. Yeah, all of these are are elements. Those kind of five categories that we pull out. Those are things that you can read, you can bring with you as kind of a checklist to read as you start reading the scientific literature. So if you take a look, and, and we'll post the graphs, we'll post everything, but yep. one of the things that um, will become evident is that the relationship between the index and the ring finger um, can be different for males and females if you compare them, right? So generally for males, that gap, that difference is actually bigger than it is um, for females. And this seems fairly trivial, right? Um, and I would argue that it still is trivial, but for a while it was kind of a big deal in the literature uh, to the point where it actually made it into um, uh, a big fancy journal called the biggest, Nature. The biggest. The biggest journal in the world. Yeah. So somebody went around, <laughs> this Mark Breedlove person, went around and measured the difference exactly like what you did in a more standardized way. So it was like one person doing all the measurements. But, but in a sample size, that's not that different from no, what you did. No, not really. Take a look at N down here of 108 to 140, basically our class size, right? Yep. If we add them all up, right? Um, and then found that there was this significant, statistically significant difference uh, depending upon the sexual orientation of the person as disclosed by that person. So we don't want you to look at your hands and go, what, like I'm actually straight? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because think back to the chocolate and the Nobel Prize winning graph, right? 
does this matter? Is it just a correlation, right? There is a strong correlation between climate change, like increase in global temperature, and the frequency of pirates sailing on the ocean. And the number right? of Kardashians. And it's, <laughs> and it's not related. So there was quite a bit of a controversy, rightly so, if nature is gonna be publishing these data, and lots of discussion that came from it in terms of understanding and interpreting data. Here's just a small sample. Yeah, so some of this, as we, uh, we pull out these, these examples from literature to show you two things. One of them is that it's still going on, that this was published in Nature. Breedlove here is the top quote. He's at a really reputable uh, institution, and he's throwing up his hands going, I don't know, I don't know, more accurate biomarker of prenatal androgen, blah, blah, blah. And then you like take just look at the bullets from the rest from like eminent scholars in the rest of the literature. I'm skeptical. It's a house of cards built on unknowns and uncertain base. It's irresistible, but built on an unknown base. Um, just correlates, um, and it's not a scientifically accurate measurement. So discussion like similar to this happens in the literature for all the kinds of things that you might want to measure. This one's particularly heated. Uh, be, well, largely because what they're trying, they sh they're throwing up their hands going, I can measure this, but it's like, sure, I, you can measure it. I, yep. I agree you can reduce the variability in that measurement down, but you're connecting it to something that is inevitably super complicated yep. and super multivariate and super, and all of this. So yeah, it's reductionary. So why? Yeah. So there's all sorts of nuance associated with this and that's why we're presenting it to you. Yeah. Now, that said, uh, this is a nice segue here. We use, especially as invertebrate biologists, but as biologists in general, we use ratios of, measure, of morphological differences all of the time. For many things, that's the only way that we have to tell one species from another, let alone, in this case, um, males from females. Yep. And so, so doing those kinds of measurements is a really powerful toolkit in the things that we know, that we share the planet with, that we often know the least about. Yeah. How do you tell the sex of a penguin? <laughs> Hello, penguin! <laughs> May I buy yeah. you a drink? Yeah, it's really hard. But if you measure their bill length, statistically speaking, you can guess or infer the sex about 85% of the time, right? Um, so, yeah, all sorts of things to think about. Um, and I hope that we've kind of opened your brain a little bit. We hope that you've enjoyed today. Um, here are some things to kind of follow up with. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to next class. We really appreciate you being here with us. We have a final correlation. Uh, oh. Number of people who drowned by falling in a pool versus films that Nicolas Cage has appeared in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like to imagine though, he's crazy enough that he might go around pushing people in pools. <laughs> Shh. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you Wednesday. We're going to stick around if you have any questions. Take care. Ta.